Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking into building an angular rotation sensor using this little device here. It's a potentiometer. It's a linear taper potentiometer, and it has a shaft, and I could turn the shaft all the way to the left counterclockwise, and I could turn the shaft all the way to the right clockwise. And if I apply a voltage across the outer two terminals, say 3.3 volts, and I turn the shaft through its complete range, I'll get a voltage on the center terminal from 0 to 3.3 volts, and we could feed that into an ADC of a microcontroller. So we could calibrate the voltage coming out of the center terminal to the position of the shaft, and we could actually get angular rotation degrees. Okay, I put a piece of tape on the shaft of the potentiometer for reference, and I have a protractor. So if I turn the shaft of the potentiometer all the way to the left, that'll be 0 degrees. If I turn it all the way to the right, that'll be 180 degrees. So all I have to do is monitor the voltage on the center pin and calibrate it to the angular rotation. And then we have ourselves a little angular rotation sensor. Okay, so now you know how to build a little angular rotational sensor using a potentiometer. So the next step, we have to build an enclosure to make it weatherproof. We need some way to mount it. We have to build a, a connector for the three wires coming off the three terminals. And we need some kind of coupling device to couple it up to whatever we want to measure. Now a lot of times when we build an electronic project, the enclosure takes up more time and more money than actual electronics inside. So I have a solution for that. It's a complete solution. We could use one of these. Now this is a throttle position sensor and they're on cars, or on motorcycles, or on ATVs. So basically it's a, it's a potentiometer. There's the three terminals, so it's a 5K pot. It's inside a plastic enclosure. It has mounting tabs, and that's where the shaft goes. It's keyed. So that's where your shaft fits in. So if I put in, I could turn it, and it's spring-loaded. It springs back. So if you go online, you can find these. They're very, very, uh, very inexpensive and easy to find. There's lots of models available. So we'll go online and we'll have a look at some of these throttle position sensors. Okay, go onto the Amazon website and search for throttle position sensor ATV because they're usually the cheapest. They're cheaper than automotive uh, throttle position sensors. And you can see the first one that comes up is the one I'm using. And if we could scroll down, you can see there's many types. And the one I'm using is, is a very common type in motorcycles and ATVs. And the cheapest one here is $9. So there's lots to choose from. So you could scroll through them all. And maybe there's one that will fit your needs better, the way it's mounted, the way the connector is. So we could go all the way down. We're getting into uh, automobiles. Here's one for a Dodge Eagle. So uh, go online and search. There's lots to choose from for one that will meet your needs. Now some cars have the throttle position sensor built into the throttle body, like this one here. This is off an Audi. So there's a butterfly valve. And as we step on our gas, pedal, it moves the butterfly valve, that'll be full throttle, and that'll be idle. So as we're pushing down on our gas pedal, this shaft is connected up to a potentiometer that swings back and forth like this, and it'll give a, it'll give a voltage output on, these, uh, on this connector here to the computer. So now the computer knows how far you're pressing down on the gas pedal for the, for the fuel injection system. So that's how it works on an automobile, the throttle position sensor. Okay, I have my TPS sensor connected up to my SCAMP3 board. So I have 3.3 volts across the sensor, and the wiper output is connected to the input of the SCAMP3 ADC. So if I turn the shaft from zero to max, I should get a reading output on my ADC from zero to 4095. So I'll check that. I'll run a program called test, and we'll check the output of the ADC. And next, I'll show you the schematic diagram of the setup. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built in my breadboard. It's very simple. All we need is a SCAMP3 board, microcontroller, and a throttle position sensor. So we hook up 3.3 volts across the two outer terminals. So we have 3.3 volts on one side, ground on the other. The middle connector is connected up to GPIO pin 1, which is our ADC input. Now the whole circuitry is powered through the USB port, and the USB connector is connected to our computer, running a serial terminal program like TerraTerm. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my SCAMP3 board. So I'm going to run a program called Test, and we can monitor the output of the ADC. So I'll run the program Test. So that's the output of our ADC. So that's our minimum, and I'll go all the way up to the top. It says 4095, 
and I'll bring it down to the bottom and it's around 208, 206. So why is that? It's not going to zero. So I can go all the way up to the top, I'm getting that 4095. When I come down to the bottom, it's only 205. So I'll look into that, why this, this is happening. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of our throttle position sensor, our TPS. So we have 3.3 volts across the TPS. You can see here, there's 3.3 volts and then ground on the other side. Then we have our wiper, which is our voltage output. Now when the TPS is all the way to the left, counterclockwise, the wiper should be on ground, we should get zero volts, and when we turn the TPS all the way clockwise to the top, we should get 3.3 volts. But in this case, we found out that when it's all the way to the left, we're getting a voltage on the output, because it's stopped mechanically at this point here. So when we go up, it'll go all the way up to the 3.3 volts, and coming back down, it'll be mechanically stopped before it hits the ground. Now they do that, so there's, there will always be a voltage at the output. So if the computer detects zero volts, it knows the connector has been disconnected. So it's a, it's a fault detector. So you would get a check engine light and you would have to go on your OBD2 uh, scanner to, uh, to see the problem and it would say the TPS is disconnected. So that's why they do that. That's why they mechanically stop it before it hits the, the ground uh, potential. So we'll never get zero volts on this, on this point here. If we do, we know it's been disconnected. Okay, I have a program running where I'm sending the angular rotation data to the 16 LEDs on a scan free board. So when I turn the shaft, you can see it's giving me a display. Now the LED on the very left, that's my alarm. So at a certain angle, at a certain rotational angle, it's going to trigger alarm. If I go up slow, it's right there. So if I go above that angle, it's going to alarm if I go below it. The LED on the left will go out. So that's my little alarm, so it's built into it also. So there I can monitor the angle of rotation with the 16 LEDs with my little alarm function. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAM3 board. It's written in Flashforth. So we assign GPIO pin 1 for the ADC input. It's on channel 1. Bars is the number of LEDs we turn on. So if I say 5 bars, we'll turn on 5 LEDs. Here's the word test. That's where I tested my EDC output. So I'm sampling my EDC every 10 milliseconds and then I'm printing it out until I hit any key on the keyboard and it will stop. So it's in a continuous loop. And that's where I found out that my ADC did not go to zero. Next word is TPS. So when I turn the shaft, it's going to sample the ADC every 10 milliseconds. This time it's going to give that data to the bars. So it's going to be proportional to, how, to the angular uh, rotation. Alarm is the same as TPS, except I got that alarm LED. So when the angular rotation is greater than 2600, it's going to turn on the LED. And if it's lower than 2600, the LED will turn off. So those are our three words. And from there, you could uh, use that as a template to make up your own uh, code for your own projects. Okay, so that's how you can make an angular rotation sensor using parts from the automotive industry for your projects. Now, if you go to the parts department for the ATV that this uh, originated from. You could buy the actual connector with pigtails that plug in here. It's got an O-ring so it makes it waterproof. So check out other sensors, other automotive sensors that you could use in your projects.